1938 Plymouth sedan been sitting here for about two months Kentucky car sitting in a carport for years and uh, buddy grabbed it he brought it over here the problem is the rear brakes are locked up in it so that's why it's sitting right out here in the open not parked really nicely like I like all my cars around here so what we're gonna do we're gonna get the torches out and uh, we're gonna bang these rear drums off and uh, see if we can't get this thing to roll then we'll go through the car and see what kind of treasures are left inside. No turning back now. <laughs> Hold up. I think we might have got one. I get a little bit of movement out of it, and this is, I've been beating the crap out of it, putting heat on it. It's just a, just aggro. I'm honestly starting to think this car's got a bunch of junk in the front seat, and everybody got in there and thought it was in neutral, and I'm thinking this whole time it wasn't in neutral. So, I think that's our problem. Cause there's a little bit of play on this hub too now all of a sudden. This car we thought was all completely locked up in the rear. We couldn't move it to save our life. We drug it back here. I got the record truck on it. Couldn't lift the back because it was so heavy and it started like messing things up. So we, when, as soon as I started putting the, the, rubber, um, the, the rubber lift guard thing up on the wrecker and it was like bending the bumper up and I'm like, eh, we better just stop. And uh, now I'm starting to think it wasn't in neutral. This car's been sitting here for two months thinking that I gotta beat the drums out of it. I don't think I did the whole time. We'll see, maybe I might have to. <sighs> All right, let's see if this bad boy starts up. My record never fails me. The brakes did though. This is the best thing I ever bought right here, but I think the wheel cylinder's leaking in it or something. I honestly never mess with this thing. I just brought it home and I just used work it. Well, what a waste of, I want an hour, I want an hour and a half of my life back. Those drums weren't even locked up, it wasn't in neutral. That's what happens when I didn't check the inside, I just started yanking it when we got it over here with the trailer. I'm not even gonna blame anybody. <laughs> it's just, it blows my mind sometimes that I've been having one of those weeks, you know? Anyway, we're gonna get this thing to the inside. Um, she pulls good. And then we'll start going through it and just kind of seeing what treasures are left. Now, I don't know anything about this car. I don't even know if the engine's locked up. I have a feeling it is. We may just slam this thing together and put, put lipstick on a pig and push her down the road. Punt, punt this bad boy like a bad football. Bow! Because um, it's not that she's a bad car, but she's just a straight project and she just needs you know all the love for somebody this would be awesome for like somebody who just wants like a winter gig you know just want to put it all back together and cruise it around as is because it is a complete car
It's only about uh, a nice 90 degrees today. Anyway, 1938 Plymouth sedan, suicide doors, humpback, whatever, cool car. Story is it was up on a trailer literally a mile up from the house. I seen it a few times driving by, never really stopped and looked at it. And my buddy Larry uh, grabbed it up, brought it over. I really don't know if I'm going to be able to get it running and driving. I don't know. I've, I'm pretty sure the motor's locked up, but we'll soak it. We'll see what happens. But we definitely have a little bit of fun cleaning it out, kind of putting it back together, going through it, seeing what treasures are still left. Came from Kentucky, from what I understand. Got all the paperwork on it. It is going to be for sale. Hit me up, you guys, if you're into this kind of... It's a, it's a really clean car, actually. Not a lot of rust in it. Rails are all good. Um, leave me a comment if you guys are interested or email me. Bradley's Wrenching at Gmail. All my, all my emails are in the description box below on all my videos. I try to remember to put all that in there. Yeah, so let's go through it. Let's see what we got. Car has been sitting in my yard for two months. As you've seen, we thought we had locked up wheels. And it turned out the trans wasn't in neutral. So I was sitting there beating on brake drums like a idiot. And uh, I finally <laughs> went in there. It's honestly kind of weird to feel the neutral in this one. It's, you think it's in neutral and it's not. So, you know, whatever. We all got, we all got a little bit, uh, I guess we got in a hurry. It's in neutral now. Put the wheels back on. It's been in my yard for two months. Finally able to get it in the shop. I looked in the trunk, but I didn't go through nothing. I just looked in here and that's about it. I'm hoping this just comes off completely. Yeah, we could just sit it off to the side. I hope it's got the brackets in there. All right, we got some gas treatment. That's always a great sign. We have the original, this is one cool thing we figured out. This is the original radio for this bad boy. That is super cool. Pumped on that. We're gonna see if we can't get it back in the car. See, it's got like brackets. We'll put it in there the best we can. I'm not counting that it works, but at least we could get it in there. All the old panels. Well, this is cool. Yeah, because they pour the dash apart in it, of course. Got a sweet bezel. We got all the gauges, the old Speedo. Got an old brake light, tail light. A lot of the wiring and stuff like that. So, once again, see what we can do with all this stuff. Hoping for the best. Uh, here is the radiator that we're going to stick back in it. Okay, this is some of the cool things I did see because like I said, I did pop the trunk. I just didn't go through nothing Like original Mopar parts in the box This I think was a reverse light glass. That's real deal That is awesome I like having stuff in the original boxes like that. I think that's pretty pretty cool We got some brake pads. We got a horn some brackets. This looks like I was hoping that was the trunk brackets, I don't know. Nothing too crazy there. Some old, uh, an old, uh, all shit strap. Nothing. Guess it goes to the tank. I don't feel no sweet hidden passages or anything. Alright. I like the suicide door thing, now that's cool as crap. We got, I have no idea what that even is. See some pedals. Some rubber stoppers. Just some nuts and bolts and just a couple of uh, hose clamps. I'm curious to see what's in this box. It's like the end of that generator. Hooks up to the starter, uh, battery, top of a battery maybe, battery tray, got some rubber. What's in here? 
So we have a genuine, looks like an old school switch or something. Not really quite sure about that one, guys. I guess this is the same. Here's that gas pedal that goes in that, the NOS box over here. That's cool. Thermostat. Thermostat. Oh, there's the brackets for the trunk. One of them. Hopefully we get two. I hope. So, inside we have some panels. Some more tires and this is the crap that I'm gonna have to figure out how that dash goes back in. They just pulled the dash and let it hang. I think they're trying to rip it all apart to do a restore on it. And then like usual, everybody does that and life happens. <laughs> Working with dash hanging out. All the old school, ooh, all the old school knob and tube wiring, the old radio. I guess it is, still does have a radio. He must have a bunch of extra parts for this thing. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just put it together a little bit at a time. So that's all we can do. And hopefully I got all the bolts. There's a lot of bolts. I mean, it's a 38. How hard can it be? And uh, yeah, we'll just keep on rolling. Since this dash was just hang in here i wanted to start with that because i could at least get some pieces back in it and kind of just work my way around from there now i have no idea how this dash went back in i just kind of guesstimated but i ended up taking out the window frame came out hmm, not that bad it wasn't too painful and uh now i'm able to get the dash in there because i can see the holes are all lining up now all i gotta do is find the screws and uh, we'll start trying to mount that and then we'll work our way around, put the gauges back in and all that stuff from there. I just want to kind of give you, an, give you guys an idea because I'll stop the camera and not film because you get all caught up in what you're doing. One thing I did find was the glove box was full of, not too much, but you know, just a lot of bolts and stuff and nuts. I found this little piece of paper I still haven't really figured out what that is he kind of like I guess he marked the switches so D is tail light um, headlight whatever I'll just keep that off the side I'm sure that'll fall in the puzzle piece like like a puzzle when I start getting stuff back together so we found this cool old valve ring lifters Stuart Warner ultimate can still sealed that's going on the shelf what else we found? Oh, that's my stuff. We found this thinking, wow, cool little jewelry box. Has all the nuts. This, this almost looks like the dash itself right here. Old school screw. I don't know. The, looks a little big. The holes on the dash look real small. And then I found this, which I'm about to break open because I can't figure out. I think it's jams. It's just another box with a bunch of, there it goes, a bunch of screws and things like that. Nails. Might not even go to the car. You know, you like always wonder about this kind of stuff. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys that. Nice ashtray. And uh, we'll continue getting this dash on. All right, back at it. I'm just gonna get this front seat out and then uh, we're gonna vacuum underneath the, underneath the seat and then I'll show you how much I got, how far I got on the uh, dash last night. Good Lord. Well, it's against my better judgment, but look at this carpet. Carpet up front is presentable, you know, repop probably back in the 70s or 80s. It's workable. We can deal with that. It's 
got a nice hole in it for the shifter, you know, whatever. Looks good. Put this carpet in the back. I'm just not feeling it. And it's a decent carpet. I just feel like if I could um, pull the front seat out, I could get it cut in real nice and it'll just look a little bit more presentable. I don't know. It's one of them things like it's going to take an extra couple hours, but it'll look so much better when it's done. So let's just go ahead and pull the front seat out and see what we got going on. I'm not sure. I don't know if that's original or not. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it had some pans put in it. It's just the way they bolted it down looks. I don't know. Still not bad though. I mean for for a 1938. If somebody did this, they did it a long time ago. It's not tacked in or nothing. It's all bolted in real nice. Anyway, I thought I was going to, I thought I was not going to, I thought it was going to be all original floors, but I don't know. I guess that is a pan. Yeah. I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> so we did one side, got it bolted in. Let me show you how I do these bolts on this carpet. I don't know if it's, this is just my way. And it always works out for me, so especially when you're trying to find like your seatbelt holes and stuff. So I use a dental pick and I'll just stick it through, make sure the in this case the bracket is straight. Find all three holes. I only need to find two. This one's good. And then what I like to do is I'll get my torch here. And this is just what works for me, guys. So We'll try to hold the camera here and then i get an old um i use old phillips screwdrivers that are broken and i make like uh, punches out of them i just grind them and what i'll do is i'll uh, just get this hot and without starting a fire real quick i just put it in the hole and just melt that carpet back a little bit like so and then it just alleviates the pain of trying to push a bolt through that thing. Or there's times when I've um, tried getting in a hurry and twisting the bolt through the carpet. It'll grab those threads of the carpet and just start unwinding all the, all the carpet strands. So, like I said, guys, this is just what works for me. If, it, if it's, you, you don't like that idea, don't do it. That's fine. And uh, that's the end of that. That's my tip of the day. <clears throat> Final shot of the carpet. Came out pretty good. See, so I was able to tuck it underneath the kick panels here, but there's no kick panel on this one, which sucks. So what I did is I just folded it under so I don't have a cut edge. And then this was already factory anyway for carpet place. So two little bungs you see for the seat. I was able to just kind of pop holes in there. I got it way under the seat for the battery. I just cut it here and just tucked it underneath so you can still get the battery tray on. You're not fighting it. And the other side came out real nice. Bang, tucked. Best is going to get right there. And then I tucked. I was even able to say, keep the lip on this side for the carpet um, factory edge there. But I just ended up tucking it. On this one, I ended up cutting it. So, because I had about, I don't know three, four inches hanging off the end. Anyway, that's it. Let's put the seats in and I'll show you the final product. Had to rip out the headliner. I know I hate, I hate to do that, but dashboard's all back in looking good. But anyway, it looks good. Front seat looks good. Carpet looks good. And yeah, that's her. So now we're going to move to the back. I know I said I were going to move to the front, but I want to get this. I want to get this uh, trunk lid mounted. So I'm going to vacuum this out. 
We're gonna mount that trunk lid. That shouldn't be too painful. And uh, then we can finally move to the front. Trunk lids on. You see me hitting it with the mallet. If I showed you this part, I don't know, I might edit it out. <clears throat> anyway, from lifting this trunk lid on and off for so many years with no brackets and trying to force it back on, it got a little bit tweaked. It's all right though. We got the brackets back on. Did a little uh, hammer, used the persuasion tool, rubber mallet of course. And um, she's sitting pretty dang good. You know, as good as it's going to be. And uh, we got the, let's, uh, let me show you here. So, we got the spare tire back in, which is a real nice spare tire holder. One bolt holds the tire up. It's all you need. I like that little giddy up right there. And then my biggest fear was this thing somehow falling, and then this thing will cut your fingers off, no doubt. So I just used my legs and just kind of held it up. So if it did give away, then um, it wasn't going to do no damage. But anyway, that's her trunk lid is on complete. I may, there's something missing up here. This little contraption is real easy. You don't even touch anything. You just lift it. It gives out and then bring it down. Nice. All right, back at it. Finish the trunk, finish the interior, put the dash in, fix the seat, fix the trunk lid. What else we do? Put some gauges in it. Just kind of gave it an all a look, see, make sure, see what's going on. I smelled the tank, it smells good. There's no fuel in it. You know they drained this thing before it got parked. Do you know what the coolest thing about this car is? Let me show you. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We're gonna leave that up too. Keeps me motivated. Okay, so we have the infamous Flathead 6. And this is the way I got it. I didn't do anything to it, but as you can see down there, starters missing and uh like i said i got in about five different pieces over in a coffee can so we'll try for that here in a little bit but i soaked the plugs last night i want to at least pull all the plugs and see if this engine turns over um it's missing the uh thermostat housing which i do have but it's off the water pumps off don't know why got a nice nest growing in the horn there other than that, if we could get all this back together again, I feel like this car, and I wasn't even hardly thinking about doing a fire up on this thing, because I do think it's locked up, but you never know, we might get lucky. I'm gonna pull the uh, um, air cleaner, squirt down the linkages. I see this is kind of just hanging in the wind, this, uh, the coil wire there, which is fine, we'll just put that back. And, uh, a few linkages here that just need to be need to be soaked. But let's do the plugs first. I feel like that's the first thing I want to do. If we could get the plugs going, I get them out, and um, then we can see if this engine is going to kick over. I think I forgot to put the camera on. Anyway. Plugs are out. If I did, we just edit this out. But if not, plugs are out. I'm just kind of just getting some of the dirt um, out of the cylinders. 
plugs came out pretty easy. I soaked them in a um, PB blaster last night, so not too painful. Do a little bit of trans fluid, not a lot. Dipstick, let's see. Oh yeah, you got oil in it, it's clean too. Let's see here. There we go. There she goes. Yeah, you get it around and then it's like, all right, now what? Built to the Nizza. Oh, there it goes, yeah. get about halfway around and it gets gets a little sticky which is fine it'll it'll push through <sighs> so close oh that's the end of that. I can't get it no more. It's in one of them spots, man. It's just sticky. That's okay. It's spinning. I'm not worried about it. We have two throttle cables. Well, two cables. One of them's a choke. One of them's like a throttle, um, kind of like a throttle adjustment cable. And what ha what's happening is these cables here are rusted completely right in this area just from water over the years now this one i got lucky on i took it all apart i ended up putting heat on it and i broke the cable inside but i was able to make a new um kind of like a new i just ran a new cable through it was tedious took me forever but i got one done and now i learned a little bit too about these things as far as like how gentle i could be and how you know how mean I could get on these things and they'll still not break and all that stuff. But what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna pull this cable out and I'll show you right here. So I tried everything. I was prying on these, trying not to break them with the uh, pliers and all kinds of stuff. They weren't working. So choke works real nice, all right? We're good there. You can see right here, flipping the little butterfly on the top. Now this throttle one, stuck froze up so let's get it out let's see if we can put a little bit of heat on the uh, cable sheathing around the cable that slides through and see if we can get lucky on that all right <laughs> i mean that's how bad these things were look at this Oh, I'm stretching it. All right, she's out. All rusted up. I'm gonna take her to the wire wheel a little bit. Just wire wheel her off, stick her back in there, lube her up one more time, and we'll put her back. All right, throttle cable is hooked up and it does pretty good. Just opens it up just a little bit. I don't know how far it's supposed to open it up. So if you pull it, I hope you can see that because I can't adjust the camera while I'm doing this. I think I might clean these terminals. 
cut them back a little bit. I think there's plenty of room. And uh, so they got a good, nice six volt connection. Well, I pretty much made a mess with the brake fluid. I only had a little bit left, of course, but I did get about a half of a reservoir full. So I'm just gonna see what this is gonna do. Probably nothing. <laughs> Don't feel like you're doing anything. Don't feel like they're doing nothing. We got some brake fluid in it in the master. Now we're gonna see if she'll if we could just get lucky. I don't know, she ain't feeling too good right now either, but well bad news on the brakes. I was hoping to get lucky, clean them all out. You know, you always roll the dice on those little all that rubber uh, seals in there. They look okay. I gave them like a C. I was like, ah, we'll make it, we'll make it happen. No, it's leaking out the back. It's not pushing fluid hard. So what I ended up doing is instead of ordering a whole master cylinder, which I didn't even see. I seen master cylinders for a 38, but not the same style as the one that's on this car. But they did have a dormant um, rebuild kit, just like new seals and stuff. So. Let's see here. How can we do this? All right, tank looks pretty good. Just got all the uh, dirt dauber nests all over it, like usual. No big deal though. Rear end, maybe we'll check the uh, oil in it, just because this thing you could tell it's been it's been sitting for a minute. Frame rails look real good. The pans underneath on this side are running one glass pack. So you know she's fast now. So this is the antenna I figured out. I didn't know there was a, this was sitting in the trunk. There's another one of these in the trunk. And I was like, what's that junk? And uh, it turns out this is the radio antenna. Now this, I think this had an aftermarket radio in it, which I do have, but I didn't put it back in. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do with this is I got a new running board for it. And I'm gonna take this running board off and put the new running board back on just so it looks a little bit more presentable. Frame rails look real good. We got the, uh, what is that, a trans brake drum? Oh, that's the emergency brake, got it. So it stops off the trans, old school stuff, cool. And yeah, not bad. Yeah, you can see it got front pans in it at one time. I wasn't sure about that. I think I said that in the beginning of my video. But I just wasn't quite sure, but yeah, it got pans in it and just in the front, so not too, too bad for how old it is. And then the front looks real good as well, so. We got the armature back. We got the starter back in. I bumped it just a few times just to see if it, the starter's even gonna work. It turns over real slow. Let's see if we could get her started. I don't know. Let's just see what she does. Let's see if she bumps. I don't have no gas to her yet, or nothing like that. I just wanna see what she's gonna do.
Uh, what I'm trying to do is <clears throat> I got three bad cylinders in the back, no compression. I do not want to take this head off. I'm hoping maybe if I could get three cylinders fired because I got three good cylinders and I got three bad cylinders. I'm hoping maybe it'll loosen up them valves because I think I got stuck valves is what I'm thinking it is. So anyway, we'll just keep on trying here. I don't know what else to do. I don't want to pull this head off. She wants to fire, but I don't know if she's going to fire off three. We'll see. She's close. All right, guys, here's the part. Here's the part where we gotta, whoo, we're gonna have to push this thing back to the back. Unfortunately, we've got three. So what do we end up? So we end up getting her started. You've seen that. We got three cylinders that are completely dead. Of course, it's the back three. That tells me the valves are staying open. We have, what else did we discover? The brakes, they will not, they need new wheel cylinders and the fuel pump. 
the fuel pump is not doing what I needed to do. It's not pumping no fuel. It's not sucking no fuel. Anyway, short story long, we're going to dump a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil slash transmission fluid down the back three. Maybe that'll get into the valves and work them out because I do not want to bring take the head off this thing. And uh, what we're going to do though is just kind of push her in the back for now. We'll put her back here with all her friends. Maybe put a car cover over her and uh, when we're got nothing going and it's a nice rainy day <laughs> I think I might drag her back in the shop but anyway she is for sale though um, other than that it was fun I had a great time messing with the 38 was it 38 39 39 no 38 I was right and um, you know was great putting her all back together thing was a basket case when I got it but uh you know <laughs> We we'll have to wash our hands a little bit. Anyway, it's enough. It's all right. It still had a great time. We got her running. We just didn't get the driver. But I did get to pull Jaden around in the four wheeler. That was a great time. He got to take her for a cruise. Anyway, my name is Brad. Poor boy's garage. Let him rip, not rock. Keep on saving them. Don't send them to the crusher because you know we hate that. But anyway, if you like what we do, hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think because I know you will anyway. And uh, until next time, we got a few things up our sleeve. And don't forget, No Name National, September 21st to the 23rd. I'll be out there with the old beep beep. Come check me out. Get a sticker. Got some new stickers for everybody. And uh, other than that, we're out.